And hello, this is Miami CO Indiana. Today I'm going to be showing you my countertop dishwasher. I have seen other of these shown on YouTube, but I've never seen this particular brand or model. This is made by Igloo. Right there, the logo. We get focus there. There we go. It made by Igloo, the same company that makes coolers that you may have. Most of their coolers they make are red and white just like this logo. This is model number FDW1010. So this is a countertop dishwasher. It just sets on top of your counter. Uh, obviously it's going to be much smaller than a regular dishwasher. But it's great for like RVs, it's great for apartments, it's even great for homes. If you don't have room for a built-in dishwasher or don't have one, this is a great alternative. The first I do want to mention to you, before you purchase one of these, make sure you have space. These are made to fit under countertops, and as you can see here, the clearance I have is maybe a milli <laughs> millimeter. It's definitely not even enough space to even put a penny in there. Uh, no modifications though, I didn't have to adjust anything, but boy, was it a tight fit. So make sure you know the height of the unit, the width of the unit, and make sure it will fit in the space you have uh, dedicated for it. It also does have to sit next to a sink so you can hook up the water supply. Also has to be close to just a regular standard plug. As you see there right under the night light, that is where my unit is plugged in. But anyway, I just wanted to give you a review um, on this dishwasher. I find it to be um, a really great asset uh, to my home. Uh, this is where I used to have a dish drainer, so really I didn't lose any valuable counter space. I just replaced the dish drainer with this unit. Obviously this unit's taller and a little bigger than a dish drainer, but I really didn't lose any valuable counter space. So anyway, I'm going to go over to the controls here, and then we're going to wash the load. I do have it loaded with dirty dishes. It has your door open. That tells you when the power's on. Sandy wash dry cycle. And that's how you control either putting it on sandy or regular. Econo. And that's your power button to turn the unit on and off. So first let's open the door. And open the machine up. And as I said, this one's made by Igloo. I will tell you that uh, most of them I've seen. Um, Danby's another one. Uh, Magic Chef, there are several other brands. SBT is another popular one. Uh, they pretty much look about the same. So there's probably one company that pretty much designs uh, these units. Uh, but you can see it is a stainless steel interior, which I really do like because it really stays clean and sanitary. As you can see, it does hold quite a few dishes. I'm not the best at loading dishwashers, but um, this is like two days worth of dishes. A uh, couple plates, you can see a, a, a pan. There's my butter tray I'm going to wash, a spatula on the top rack. Coffee cups, bowls, and assorted silverware as well. So it does hold a decent amount. This is called a four place setting, which means it's designed to hold four plates, uh, four saucers, uh, four cups and a four place setting of silverware and then a few assorted utensils. That's really what it's designed for. So it's not huge. This is not something that I would recommend to any large families. A uh, single person, a couple, or maybe even a couple with one child probably would get by just fine with this unit. Um, so anyway, we're going to close it up and I'll show you how to run a cycle. I do want to mention one thing to you. So I'm just going to close the door here and get ready for the cycle. I do like this door feature. It has a latch, so it clicks when it goes on. Well, there's one thing I did forget, though. Stab the soap. That's always good. Okay. So we better do that before we turn it on. But right down here, you can see where it says detergent. That's where you put your soap. So it's very easy uh, to put the soap in the unit. You want to make sure that you do use soap that is designed for automatic dishwashers. In other words, you do not want to use, of course, in any dishwasher, 
um, like your regular dish soaps that you hand wash with. They suds too much and will cause you all kinds of problems. It could damage your dishwasher as well. So the detergent here, it says to fill it full if you have hard water, about half full. Oops, go down there so you can see. About half full if you have soft water. I have soft water and I find it does just fine. Approximately half full. So we got our soap in. Let me put that back to the side now. We're ready to close the lid again. Meanwhile, it does have this latch here. I wanted to show you here. That latch latches into this part right up here. And it really is a tight seal. And you see the rubber here. That's what seals, and I've had no issues with any leaks. Not a drop has ever come out. So we'll shut the lid again. Now I want to get you to the cycles here. One thing uh, that I think is important if you're looking for one of these dishwashers is to make sure it has this. It may be called um, heated, or it may be called sani, but you want to make sure that a heating element is in your dishwashing um, unit itself. Some models I have seen do not have this feature, so you're dependent on how hot your water is coming out of your faucet. The main thing for a dishwasher, you want to sanitize your dishes. So I always keep mine on Sani. This will make the wash cycle and the rinse cycle 160 degrees. It has a heating element inside the unit that will keep the water uh, constantly up to that temperature. Uh, this aids in uh, sanitation, also in better cleaning, and also the dishes are literally bone dry uh, when the unit is over. So anyway, next thing we have to do is hook it up to the faucet. This comes with it. This is an adapter that comes with the dishwasher. You just take the old adapter off and put this one on. And it's a very easy hookup. You simply take your hose, you push down, push it up in, and then make sure it's latched. You want to go hot water, I always say go slow at first, just to make sure you have that hooked up correctly, and I did. So now we have the hot water on, and the unit hooked up to the hose. So there's two hoses here, one's going to take the water from the tap into the machine, the other one's going to drain the water out, discharge the dirty water down the drain. So we're all ready to go here, so we'll go ahead. The next step is to set our cycles here. Something I haven't showed you, the cycle settings are rinse only. That's if you just want to do a quick rinse and not wash the dishes yet. I've never used that. Uh, then you can see normal wash cycle and also a short wash cycle. On normal washes, which I normally use, it'll wash the dishes through two cycles and also rinse the dishes through two cycles. If you put it on short wash, it will wash one cycle and rinse one cycle. But it really doesn't um, run that long, even on the regular. So you simply just take your dial and put it on the normal setting. Okay, we're on normal wash setting. And simply hit the power button on. And you can hear the dishwasher taking in water. And that's all there is to it. On normal wash cycle, it takes approximately 50 minutes to go through the entire cycle. On short cycle, it's approximately 25 minutes. So really, it's pretty short cycles. And I will tell you, the dishes come out sparkling clean. But we will let it run, and I'll come back through the magic of video and show you the end results after the cycle is complete. Let's start here so you can hear it. What it's doing there is getting to the correct water level. So it sucks it in a few times there. And now it's off to the wash. So anyway, when this cycle is complete, again about less than an hour, we'll open it up and show you the results of the dishes and how they did. So I'll be back here in just a few. So we're back about 50 minutes later. Cycle has completed. Just show you how you end the cycle here. First thing you do is turn your water supply off. Turn it off. Turn the power of the dishwasher off. It's off. And then remove the hose. First thing, this big red button on here, very important. If you don't uh, push that, 
there's going to be pressure in the line that's going to spray all over the place. So you just release the pressure by pushing this button a couple times. It's a very quick release. All you do is push down, drain the water out. I just leave mine right there on the side of the sink. There is a place back there you can actually push it behind the machine. But it's still going to have a few drips of water and I don't find it inconvenient. I just lay mine right on the side of the sink like that. So open the door now. And dishes are complete. We can see the steam roaring out. These are very hot. They look a little damp right now, as you can see on the plastic. But let me tell you, in about 30 minutes, this is all bone dry. These are, everything here is very, very, very hot. But you can see, kind of look at the plate in there. You can see how it's shiny and sparkly. That pan is so old, it's never going to get clean. But you can see how things shine. If I can get this coffee cup out without it is it's still way too hot so everything is very very hot since it went through that 160 degree um, rinse cycle and wash cycle so that the doors made just to tilt like that it'll let the steam out in about 30 minutes all that will be completely dry and ready to be put away so that is the uh, igloo countertop dishwasher um, I think it does a really superior job it's very easy to operate. It's really not that noisy. And the cycle again on normal wash only takes about 50 minutes. On uh, short wash uh, only takes about 25 minutes. So it's really fast as well. This is Miami CO Indiana. Thanks for coming and joining me today as I showed you my Igloo countertop dishwasher. Again, the model is FDW1010. Thanks for watching and hope you have a great day. So long.